Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let's sing! Live from Harlem, New York, it's me, Alex, and it's the Ramble. It comes to you from that city below you, New York, New York, until midnight tonight. Larry Bubbles Brown is a working comic. He lives in San Francisco, California, a town I was born and raised in. And quite frankly, would love to go back to, but I hear it's not that great. Right, Larry? It's not that great, but I think all the big cities are collapsing, so it wouldn't be any different. Yeah, well, New York is just dull. New York used to have a certain danger to it, you know? And danger is uh, very exciting in a lot of ways, you know? And, uh, but it's not that way anymore. It's just dull. Just dull. Really? Yeah, if I weren't paying the rent I'm paying here, I'd move out of New York and go somewhere else, right? But I, going back to San Francisco, I hear, is not an option because it's really gotten terrible. Uh, down the Union Square and around there is bad. Yeah, yeah. Where you lived before in the uh, marina, you would be, uh, you'd be safe there. You think so? Yeah. Would I be happy with it today, though? Well, after probably not after New York sounds more exciting than here. So. Well, uh, I don't consider New York exciting because I never leave the house. <laughs> well, you got a big house. Yeah, well, I, we're, I, inside here, for me, is better than outside. You know, so people go, you oh. be like the uh, Collier Brothers. And the who? The Collier Brothers. Who, Collier Brothers? I, Collier. They were two guys that lived in a house in New York City, and they they had so much shit, and they're piled up. Like they died, and it took days to find their bodies. That's how much... Oh, they were very hoarders. Very famous story. It happened in the 20s or 30s, I think. Oh, they were hoarders. Hoarders, yeah. They're probably the original hoarders, right? But it took them days to find their bodies. That's how much stuff they had. Hmm. Yeah, well... Well, you know. I think this, I, I would just follow the smell, I would think. Yeah, well, uh, you know. And, and, and by the way, uh, Bubbles and I both fear death, okay? So. <laughs> well, I think the only thing more boring than New York is right now would be death. <laughs> okay? I mean, I, the, the idea of not being here, and this, is, and this is the second show in a row we've done where we've talked about death, the idea of not being here and things are going on without me. It's like being thrown out of a party. You're right. That's it. That's it. Sorry. We, you have to go home 80, now. We've what? been 86 off the planet. Well, here's what I've wondered. Now, th- think about this. This is a little, little weird thinking here. I think that maybe when you die, you're not going to miss anything because... Really, you take this whole world with you. In other words, maybe, at least to you, this world no longer exists. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, you know, that uh, when you die, so does everything else. You know, because there's no realization of it. I don't think. I don't know. You know, there's such things as serious... uh, talk about different dimensions and things like that where your life is going on in another dimension uh, and uh, that it keeps going on in that dimension but it doesn't go on in this dimension so you know how do you think your life is in another dimension uh, probably very boring like it is here yeah yeah it, 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 supposedly you live in diff- on different planes but I didn't say, I don't believe you it's not like I'm not a radio announcer in those other levels okay maybe I'm doing something else but I'm still me does that make sense yeah yeah so maybe you're not a stand-up comic 
<laughs> yeah, who knows? But. Maybe you're selling real estate. <laughs> well, I think your father had it nailed where he said it's going to be like it was before you were born. Just, you won't know. Yeah, but I don't know what it was like before I was born. I have no idea. I know what went on before I was born because I, you know, I read history things and so on. But uh, can you imagine having been born back in like, oh, I don't know, the year 20 B.C.? When you died when you were 14. <laughs> yeah, right. This, this show I was watching, which was called Casualty, it's an English show, and it was doing a version of the show at the hospital they do the show about. But in 1900, I think I told you that the last time we were talking. But the that opening, sounds like a good show. I got to. At the opening, they have out. some statistics that lead you into it. And they say the average age in 1900 at the time of death, what do you think it was? I, I think I read this a while ago. I think it was around 47. 45, yeah. Okay, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and this was 40 years before antibiotics. So middle age, you were, middle age was 20. <laughs> you, exactly. You, you know, if you lived longer than 45, you were, you were living on borrowed time. You know, it, 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 it's amazing. And, we, and in something like oh, a little over 100 years, we've managed to expand that to at least double that amount, almost double that amount. Yeah. You know, so. So what's, uh, what's the main thing that's kept us going longer, the antibiotics? Oh, I think antibiotics may be the prime reason we brought the death rate, uh, the age of death up. Uh, I think antibiotics, because in the old days, if you didn't have an antibiotic and you got something, you just kept getting more and more and more infected, you know, and uh, uh, you couldn't do anything about it. You couldn't kill it. They they had they had stuff they used, you know. They tried to put on people to try and stop the infection and so on, but antibiotics they just give you a shot and you're you're good to go. Yeah, so back then you probably died of tuberculosis or yeah, some horrible infection. Did you ever get a social disease? Uh, no, I always avoided those, thank God. Really? Well, I, I was kind of, I, I, I considered my, myself a test subject for gonorrhea for a while there. <laughs> and um, if, if I had gotten that uh, in the 1900s, um, I don't know if it would have killed me. But it certainly would have made it impossible for me to have sex or to pee. Guys used to go around, this is true, with, you know, wide-brimmed hats. And inside the, the hat, they would carry a catheter. Because when you got gonorrhea, it would plug up your urinary system. Oh, God, system. really? Jesus. And you had to use a catheter in order to pee. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have a friend who lost uh, the use of the bottom part of his body. He's a paraplegic. And he has to use a catheter. I said, well, it's nice because you can do it from the living room. You just hook it up to the wherever <laughs> and run it and just stick it in whenever you need to, you know. So, I said, so gonorrhea would just screw up your urinary tract. Yes, the, it would. Where, yeah. a, where a syphilis could actually kill you. Syphilis could kill you. Like Al Capone. Unless you got an antibiotic, and then you knocked it right out. Yeah, one shot of yeah. penicillin. But a lot of times the trouble with it, isn't it wonderful we're talking about this? Uh, hi, folks. Are you having a good day today? Okay. Um, uh, syphilis um, was a disease that didn't kill you immediately. You got it. It took years. You got it. You got some symptoms, and then it went away. And then it lay dormant. And then it popped up 20 years or so later, but not necessarily as a deadly disease, but sometimes a deadly disease. You didn't know what it was. There was one thing called paresis, which was a mental problem it could give you. You know, there were any number of things. So people died 20 years later. If in the intervening time they had had access to antibiotics, they could have killed it, right? And, and then the 20 years later, there wouldn't be a problem. But you'd have to know you had it 
And that's the other problem because if you simply got it and you had some minor symptoms and then, you know, you went on with your life and all of a sudden 20 years later here it happens because you haven't done anything to stop it. Very insidious little disease, really. And a reason not to have indiscriminatory sex, which is brings us to our next topic. With all the antibiotics and everything, you know what it's brought about? Our ability to have indiscriminate sex. Yeah. Oh, if I get the clap, hell, I'll just go get some antibiotics. Right? If I get syphilis, I'll get antibiotics. You know, so... Anyway, can we talk about something more pleasant, maybe? <laughs> did you did you go down and do that Netflix thing yet? Uh, that's this week, yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so this thing will be on. This thing will be on a week from last Friday when it. Or it, it okay. This won't be, but it probably would still be on Netflix. Are they going to videotape you for this? That I don't know. I don't think so. But uh, because you know they're broadcasting it every night. Really? Live. Yeah. Well, there's like I looked at this thing goes on for days. They got uh, they just an amazing number of shows. I think uh, Jerry Seinfeld was at the Hollywood Bowl last week. Yeah. Well, they, supposedly every comic in the world is in L.A. right now. I heard there's 500 comics. Really? Yeah. Wow. Which means that, well, first of all, there shouldn't be that many comics to begin with. Well, my question is, are there 500 funny people? You know? I mean, I guess, well, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're very funny, but I, I don't well, know. Well, when I started, there was 100 professional comics in the, in the United States total. Really? So, yeah. And now they're just 500, and those are the There's ones Netflix... 500 on my block, probably now. Well, those are the ones that Netflix invited. Uh-huh. You know, how many more are there out there? There's thousands. It's, uh, I think the Internet has caused this insane desire for people to do stand-up. It's just well, crazy. You know, I talk about uh, websites. You know, when I started doing a website, there were only... God, maybe under, un, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe overestimating it over under a thousand. And most of them were for businesses and things like that, you know, and they were doing business with each other. Um, but uh, there was hardly anybody, uh, in fact, somebody had to explain to me, and you know, I'm tech savvy, somebody had to explain to me what a website was. And they said, you want to do a website? And I said, what's a website? And they said, this is the thing you put up, and people can go online, and they can go get it. And I said, well, how do we do it? And then I met some people who taught me how to do it. But these were like real savvy geek heads that, you know, were on to every new scientific thing that was happening. Um, but, I mean, now, you, how about podcasts? I was the first podcast. The first. Literally, you did it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a podcast uh, in which when I was out of work, uh, I wanted people to be able to hear me, so I did a half hour. And sometimes I'd bring somebody like Bubbles in or whatever, and we'd, we'd do it, and then I would put it on my website. But what happened was a guy I knew said, hey, I just invented something. I said, what is it? He says, it's called Auto Alex. And I said, well, what's that? He said, they, put, they download it from your site, they put it on their machine, and then every day it goes onto your site to see if there's a new episode. And if there is, it downloads it automatically. And I went... Well, he was ahead of the curve. I said, that's cool. Well, what is that? That's what became podcasting. That's what Apple did in order to supply their iPods with programming. You know? And and so we were doing this in, I believe, when was I out of work that time? It was probably 1998. 98, 99. Yeah, yeah. And if you try to find anybody else who was doing a podcast at the time and doing it in the way that I was doing it with the delivery system and everything, there was nobody. 
So I'm number yeah. one. I'm, you, you know, I'm, you should get credit for that. I should, but nobody's going to, you know, I, I, in fact, I mentioned it somewhere and they said, oh no, you weren't the first podcast. You couldn't have been, blah, 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 blah. And I try to tell them, you know, name somebody else who was, you know, so, um, and in, uh, in 1999, uh, when I was working with Play Incorporated, we were doing, remember, live television that went out to the internet. A show every day from my apartment. Yeah. Uh, in fact, yeah. I think I actually maybe I have a copy of that with you as as a guest. Really? Yeah. Well, if if that guy had lived, I think that thing would have been huge. Yeah, but anyway, so we, uh, you know, don't ever be the first. You don't ever want to be the first. You want to be the second. The first never gets remembered. The second does. You know. Um, so uh, anyway, so I mean. Uh, but where was I going with that? <laughs> you were the first podcaster. Oh, yeah. So I was number one, right? Um, how many are there now in the world? Uh, millions. Three, four million podcasts at least? I heard that there's 5,000 new podcasts a day start. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, and I'm doing this podcast and it hardly gets out to anybody. Nobody cares. But I was first, folks. I was first. <laughs> and then people go, oh, yeah, sure, you were first, right? You couldn't have been first. Why couldn't I have been first? I had to be somebody who was first, right? And I've got the program. I've got the program sitting on a computer I'm looking at right now that was Auto Alex. And uh, I, I can prove it by showing you the program. And the quarter day. of a century ago. Mm -hmm. Quarter of that, a century ago. That, that is a quarter of a century, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I, when I think 1998, I don't think that that's that far ago, uh, long ago. But it really was. Yeah, that's. Uh, I remember, God, how thing, how slow things moved on the internet then, and you, you had so much wiring and stuff in your apartment. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I've got a lot of wiring here too, but not as much as I had to have then. You know, so, but anyway, so, uh, uh, so you're going down to L.A. Yeah. Is Netflix putting you up or? They are, I have. So. Oh, really? Okay. I'd like to be, just get a little bit of the money of Netflix's bill for, you know, hotels for people for this thing. Yeah, 500 people, that would add up. A, they're filling up, they're filling up huge venues. It's uh the logistics must be insane for something like that. Well, well, they've got you know they've got all the money in the world for crying out loud, you know. And they started out by what sending DVDs to the mail. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. They stopped doing that a few years ago, and the people there were a certain amount of people that were yelling. It's kind of like you with dial-up. <laughs> Don't stop my dial-up, God damn it! You know, yeah. yeah. Some of us don't go into the new world uh, easily. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, uh, I. I um, so anyway, but well, we should have like uh, there should be like a there should be podcast awards, and we could give you a lifetime achievement since you started it. Yeah. Well, I mean, nobody nobody knows that. You know, I, I, I try to mention that to people, and they all, they all doubt it. And uh, I'm telling you, I, was, I knew the business back then. I knew what people were doing and not doing, and nobody was doing that. I mean, I only did it out of frustration. I had lost a job. I wasn't doing a show. What the hell am I going to do? Uh, you know, what am I going to do? Yeah. So I figured I'll just do a show. And people can listen to it every day for a half hour, and they get a little sense of me, and I'll have some people on with me who they know, and uh, that's the way it will go. And that's what I did. It was just simply out of frustration. I wanted to keep doing a show every day. And then I think that was at a period of time when, uh, yeah, that was a period of time, I think, when I left the last time at Live 105. Oh, no, wait a minute. 
was it prior to that? It might have been prior to 1998. Now that I'm thinking about it. No, you left. No, you left uh, Live 105 in July of '97. Yeah, but I. And you started the podcast in '98, '99. That's what I remember. It, 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 without the video. Yeah. Without the video. Yeah. Okay. See. Well, you're my proof. You were there. You saw me doing it. I was there. Cokie Roberts was on your show once. You were absolutely. Well, that was the uh, TV thing we did. Yeah. Yeah. Cokie Roberts and her husband, who was... Who was her husband? He was I don't remember. He was famous, too. He was? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody... Rem who remembers Cokie Roberts? Uh, <laughs> ABC, ABC, right? Yeah. She, she was very popular, very well known. Mm -hmm. A nice lady too. Yeah, slept on my couch. She did. <laughs> yeah, they had to take a break, and they both went into the other apartment, and they both crashed on my couch. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah that's right. You had two apartments. That was. That's right. I had two apartments. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, let me see here. How much time we got left? Oh, we got about five minutes left here. So um, uh, you're, you're going down to L.A. Well, you will have already gone down to L.A. by the time this plays. Yeah, so I'll probably bomb. But are you? Are, where are you doing it, though, from? Are you doing, like, you're doing it because you're doing it with a... a with Felipe at the uh, Hollywood... Felipe I think it's, it used to be the Hollywood Palace. It's called now the Avalon Theater. Oh, okay. Uh, I know where that is. Right across the street from the Farmer's Market, I believe. Okay. If I remember correctly, it was used for many different things. But uh, um, well, I remember as a kid there used to be a show called the Hollywood Palace. They right. Did, well, it came from there. Yeah, and it was uh, you know who the uh, her first job on that show uh, holding the cards or something was Raquel Welch. Oh, really? Yeah, in 1964, I think. Wow. 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 Well, anyway, so, uh, you know, you're going to be going down there, and is it, is he doing, is it like a Latin comedy show, that one, or is it just he's... This one's called a side show. I don't know, I have no, they have given me no details about it at all. I don't know who else is on, I don't know what we're doing, I, I know I'm doing 10 minutes, so... Yeah. Well, you got 10 minutes, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> I think so, and I think it's... Uh, I think the thing's sold out already. I don't know. Let me ask you this question. You know, we talk about time, and then he says he has ten. He has to do ten minutes. Well, he obviously has ten minutes. You know, you do usually what twenty? That's what uh, you usually hit for these days. Yeah, twenty. Twenty. Okay. Now, sometimes you ask to do forty. Uh, not anymore. No, I don't like a headline. So. Yeah, but if they asked you to do an hour, could you do an hour? If I said, "Bubbles, I'm doing a show, and I gotta have you do an hour. I need an hour out of you." Could I'd you have to. I'd have to use my notes. But I could do it. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, but I couldn't do it. But you've got a tight. But you couldn't got do it from memory because I perform so little anymore. So. But you've got a tight twenty. A tight. The twenty's pretty tight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe you could stretch it to 25 if you had to? If I had to, yeah, but then I, you know, sometimes I go up like once a month, so I'm, I get lost easily. So. Yeah. Now, you used to do it, what, about five times a week? In 1984, I did 350 sets in one year, and uh, last year I did 30. So. How many did you do? 30 last year. Wow. Really so changed. In 1984, I almost one a day. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you this. And we're running out of time here, but do you work, do you go out and try to get work, or do you just wait for it to come to you? I pretty much wait for it. Okay. but if, So if you were aggressive, you could probably do 60 a year or 90 a year. Right? Yeah, I could, and I probably should, because I'd be sharper, and uh, 
I did a, I did the punchline last week for one night, and that was actually it was so much fun. I said, oh, I should do this more, but uh, usually I look I don't like to do it. And it it's almost like going to the dentist, you know. Now we don't like you doing it either. So. <laughs> well, well, that's why I never got famous. Yeah, well, you, you never have been aggressive. No. Okay, but you are still one of the funniest comics alive. And if anybody out there listening to us hears that Blurry Bubbles Brown is playing somewhere, you're missing out on a good treat by not going to see him. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm I, not aggressive. I'm like the good cancer. <laughs> Oh, Bubbles, you are you are a delight, ah. you know, uh, and I appreciate all the times you've spent with me oh, here. no problem. Got to be loyal to friends. So. One of these days you'll probably get a note saying, Alex can't talk to you this week. He died. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, yes, Lawrence. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey there, everybody. Hello. How are you? What's happening? What's new? How, how's the family? Let me see here. I just got to adjust a few things, and we're going to be ready to go. Okay. All righty. Got some people waiting to come on here. Got about uh, four of them waiting. And with me, that would make it five. So let me just uh, bring them all in here, and I will, um, let me see here, do that. There they are. Okay, first of all, we got, hey, Jason, how are you? We haven't seen you in a long time. How have you been? Pretty good. Pretty good. Not I 100%. had to call because my kid's in your neighborhood. What'd you say? So I just had to call because my kid is in your neighborhood. In my neighborhood? Yeah. What's he doing here? <clears throat> Marching band is going to perform at the Museum of the Intrepid this weekend. Oh, really? And oh, yeah. uh, uh, how old is he now? 16. 16, okay. Because uh, uh, Kevin, who calls the show, has a daughter who plays in the marching band up in Oregon at Oregon oh, yeah. University. She's in college now, though, right? Huh? She's in college, though, right? She's a what? In she's college. In oh, in college, Oregon. yeah. Yeah, like this is her first year in college, yeah. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. He's still in what probably is your high school band, right? Yep, yep. He will be a junior this next year. No, oh, okay. All right. So how come they sent him to like... New York to do that? Uh, it's just a marching band trip, you know, going to, it was actually the marching band and the choir are going to New York and performing and stuff. So I guess nice. they actually, uh, they were in uh, Central Park yesterday and they saw, or was it today? And saw the, I don't know his real name, but the actor and young Sheldon. Oh, really? Yeah, I guess he was in Central Park. Yeah. yeah. So he was in there doing something. My kid has no idea who the hell he is because, you know, he's a gen whatever, doesn't watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. But, uh, so, and, and, uh, um, yeah, Ke Kevin does that. Kevin, Kevin's been recording some high school bands also. Yeah. He's still recording high school bands. Yeah. Even yeah. though his daughter is not in high school anymore, he feels compelled to do it, which is terrific, you know. Uh, and, uh, so anyway, so your kid is, uh, that's good. <laughs> what instrument does he play? The baritone. The bass light, the tuba. Uh, oh, he plays a tuba? Yeah, it's, it's the baritone. It's a version of the tuba. A, a, mm. It's not a Barry Sax, is it? Nope, nope. It looks just like a tuba. It's, it's just a, it's a tuba. little bit smaller. It's a baritone. I'm one of those rare people who loves the sound of a tuba. It, and, you know, I was actually told, because in his uh, uh, band, they were trying to get him to switch to the French horn. Mm -hmm. And I, with my job, I was doing a job at a music shop and the guy was actually telling me, he goes, tell your kid not to, he goes, he's actually going to have a better chance of getting scholarships in college. If he just sticks with the tuba, with the baritone he said, because most kids end up going away from that and they don't want to go back to it because they feel like that's degrading them to go back to it. He goes, but a lot of orchestras and bands want to have the baritone. So he's one like, of my favorite arrangers for Frank Sinatra. 
was a guy named Billy May, who I like better than even Nelson Riddle, who was usually the one everybody associates with Sinatra. And he used a tuba in everything because it gave you that really low sound, you know? It was very good. It was terrific. Anyway, that's, uh, that's my claim, and I'm sticking to it. Hey there, Alan. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you, Alex? Yes. Okay. I'm doing uh, relatively fine. You know, I, we went out for a walk today, and I could barely walk, so, you know. Did you take the cane? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to your 60s. Yeah, well, Marjorie, uh, Marjorie uh, walked with me. She said, I walked fine, you know. But it just was a little harder for me to walk than normally. But maybe tomorrow will be better, you know. So, uh, and uh, uh, Charlie, I guess it's still raining in. Uh... Well, it didn't actually rain today, but the fields were still underwater, so. Well, why don't you start coaching a swimming team? <laughs> yeah. You know, or water polo team. There we go. Water yeah, softball. yeah, with baseball bats. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, hello there, Brian. Hello. <clears throat> hello. Brian, for a guy who works his ass off, is here yeah. a lot. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. You know? Thank you. Thank you. What else am I going to do? Well, I mean, what you come home and uh, you would deal with the uh, the significant oh. other, right? I was already with Adrian for a while, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I notice whenever she's there, she adores you. Yes, because yeah. I do everything for her. Yeah, and but enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, she'll get to an age where you, you know, she wants to be let off a, a block from you know school and things like that you know am i right jason yeah yeah my kid wasn't too bad at that but yeah you get to the point where and then <clears throat> i loved it was that charlie was you said it the other day like something about your kids don't realize until they're in their late 20s yeah that's what i was saying it gets better when they get in their late 20s i just, I just can't wait because i'm in the you know he's starting to actually come around a little bit but that unappreciation stage it's just like dude you don't know what i do for you yeah yeah. Well, it was like uh, my father said the, the saying was, uh, I used to know, I used to think my father was really stupid. The older I got, the smarter he got. All right. I must be rubbing off on him, you know. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Charlene. Charlene's got her hand up. Yes, yeah, Charlene. Can I say, Alex, my son made souvlaki tonight, and I wasn't allowed to have any. What is that? <laughs> It's like hmm? Avro. Anybody know what that is? Or is that like a New York thing? Like, what <laughs> is it again? What souvlaki Charlie? is? What, I'm Explain, to, Alex. What a souvlaki or a gyro make, is? Oh, a gyro. Oh, oh, oh a gyro. gyro. He didn't. He didn't make gyro. He gyro. Didn't make, well, it's a gyro. I said that or a gyro. He, he didn't, didn't I say he, that, Alex? He didn't I said gyro or gyro. He didn't put the meat on a spit and have it go around with flies <laughs> chasing it, right? He's going to do that next, but I'm just mad because he doesn't give me any. He's like, mine, mine, all mine. Oh, he only cooks it for when, himself? I know. Isn't that lousy? Yeah. I keep telling him that's not right. Now, you need to learn how to beat your kid. How is your old is your kid? 47? <laughs> well, getting close to it. He's 30. I said to him, I said, you would think 30 years old, you'd know better not to be stupid like that, right? And not share anything. You live in my house, right? So you think 30 years old, you could be able to say, get the fuck out of my house. I yeah. tell him that on a regular basis. I tell him that. He, is he still living at home? Oh, he has this, Alex. You don't want to know. <laughs> oh, really? He's, he's got 30, bad luck. I don't know. Well, still... you know, boys don't leave, they say, right? You guys are boys. When did you well, leave? I when, I, I, when did I leave home? <laughs> when I was 17. Yeah, I graduated oh, high school and was gone, uh, never went back. I, I, Same I, here. Yeah, I, yeah, I left home when I think I was, I was 18. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish you would have done that, but failure to launch that movie with well, Goldie Hawn's yeah. daughter and what's his name? Well, part I of, don't know. Part of, the problem, part of the problem that I had over the years has been that I'm in radio, and so therefore... I would have to go to another city to take a job. You know, there weren't, you only had so many jobs in every city. 
So to stay home, I would have to get a job in San Francisco, but I couldn't get a job in San Francisco, so I had to go to Modesto, California, or I had to go to Sacramento, or I had to go to Klamath Falls, Oregon. Wait, so but you I, were never in those places. What? Were you in, actually in those places? Yes. I know you were in San Francisco. You were in Modesto? I was in Modesto, yeah. Wow. And I was in uh, Sacramento as well. And uh, let me see, where else did I work? I uh, worked in Klamath Falls, Oregon, as I said, you know. Florida? How could you forget Florida? Then I started out in San Rafael, California. <clears throat> So, right. you know. Where the hell is that? <laughs> what? I said, where the hell is that? It's I'm not north from of the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. All right, Marin, I got you. I know where that is. <laughs> it's in Marin County. My best friend lives there. And I grew up in San Anselmo, which is right next to San Rafael. So. Still is, too. Hmm? It still <laughs> is, too. Yep, still is. Right. Yeah, yeah. How, how'd that happen, Charlie? Your best friend lives here? Well, uh, yeah, when, when I, we lived in Chicago when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And he went to Berkeley and I went to UT. Ah, okay. So and he stayed out in California. <clears throat> really? Never left, huh? Yep. Mm. Why, the turds aren't getting heavy enough in the streets uh, yet for him to leave? <laughs> The human well, he lives in San Rafael, San huh? Rafael, whatever they call it. He lives in San Rafael, so he doesn't live in San Francisco. By the way, I just used the word turd. Do I have to put down that we used unacceptable language on this show today? Or is that, mm -hmm. I think that's an okay word, isn't it? Depends yeah. on the contents. Seven words. Poo emoji. Yeah, poo emoji. Yeah. <laughs> there is an emoji. There is a turd emoji. So. Yes. Right. Yes. You know, I'm I'm Ooh. still going to say we didn't say any dirty words tonight. So. No, that's not a dirty word. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so, you know, and we and then we have Bree. He's over there in uh, Malaysia. Hi. Hi. What, what, yeah. What? Learned a couple of things that you have one terabyte for your Internet. That's amazing. They, they do not have that here. Really? It would be considered the best thing you could get, which would be awesome, would be one gigabyte. What? 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 No. Oh. Absolutely. One Last gigabyte night, I would be awesome. I accidentally said gigabyte, but I meant terabyte. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I For the longest time, I lived with 300 megabytes per second, and that was really good. And uh, now I just I, I have a 5G with a 5G router. And so it's whatever 5G is. Well, I can do my a, speed test really, now. You have a really good signal. It's a good picture. Yeah, you know. I don't understand. Yeah. I can. Uh, I will try to do my the speed test now to see what uh, and it, <laughs> and then my video. Watch my videos drop. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm usually getting around two hundred megabytes per second. That's yeah. Really, two hundred megabytes? Well, I have like seventeen devices here, so I think it it splits them somehow. Um, you know. Between oh and yeah, and this is on my SIM card, not on my five G data. But but it should be five G, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, I'm on my five G. Anyway, I'm just telling so, you, I work in the industry, and you guys are all way too concerned about your numbers because half of them don't mean shit. Uh huh. All it means to me, I, I'm I'm coming through on forty five megabytes. How how does my signal look? My signal all right? Forty five megabytes. You sound good. You look good. Yeah. 45. Well, I'm thinking of going to two terabytes just because I can. It, there's no such thing. Huh? There is. <laughs> there is. There, there's no such thing as one terabyte. No, it's gigabytes. I looked it up last night after the show, Alex. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do I have? You might have a gig speed because even what I do, I deal with uh, systems that actually provide the internet for neighborhoods and i think basically the most we can do is basically about 40 gig well hold on a second let me look and I, see what i have I, one gig what verizon with with the uh, comcast which is very fast and i bet you don't really have one gig well i you know when i tested i just tested it right now 
and it was about 950 megabits per second. That is but that's because it went, crazy. it went through my VPN. I, I'm th- saying that's outrageously crazy high, even not doing a VPN, especially for, uh, you know, you can't be at coax. It has to be fiber, right? It's on fiber. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me see here. What does it say? Comcast. They're ex- this is just, they, they don't have fiber over here. They're like, oh. the company I work for is the only one who's actually putting in fiber where I'm at. So I didn't know how Comcast is doing other places. Oh, yeah. They have a, they have a node in the neighborhood. And from that node, it splits off to like 300 different houses. And I guess to the node, I, I don't know if it's fiber to the node or. or it, yeah, it should be f- fiber the whole way. But they, yeah, they redid the whole area about ten years ago. The the a lot of the Bay Area. I'm sure where Brian's at, it's probably fiber too. I know what I'll do here. I'll go. Here. Hey, Alex. The other thing I wanted to just ask you about this. Okay, so podcasting as a term didn't exist until 2004. So no one called it that. So you, what you did was probably audio blogging, and that existed in 1993. So what what was the year you did it? Because I write about this, and and your Wikipedia doesn't say anything about it, and in fact, your subheading on Sirius XM should I, be the changed. The year that I think I did it was uh, nineteen. It was nineteen ninety nine, anywhere between nineteen ninety eight and nineteen ninety nine. Okay, and what? How how can you? How can we verify it? Who was the guy that called you and said, "I have the auto Alex"? Do, is that do you person say you have saw that program? Excuse me. Oh. It is. It is one gig. And it's two gigs that I'm getting. Oh, it's gigs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So I was going to say, I thought, well, maybe New York could have terabytes. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it I don't think exist, that's yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm so losing it lately. I can't remember these kind of things. We had the discussion last night, Bree. You probably heard it. And Alex, I thought I had one gig, and he said he had one terabyte. And I'm like, ah, that seems odd. Well, but I, I have one gig. Knows, one gig up what, and one gig down. Right, you know a lot more about this than I do, yeah. and so I thought, okay, I'm going to look it up. Yeah, and uh, yeah, one terabyte. Nobody has it yet. I mean, there's the technology's not there, like Jason said. Yeah, you yeah, know? Charlie. But one gig. I have a one gig router. Mm-hmm. It can I can go to ten gigs on this router, but for what? Well, if I will go to two gigs, they got to put a new router in here. Oh no, I, mine they changed last year. Yeah, so I could uh, get the uh, higher. Yes, uh, Charlene, you have your hand up. I think I heard. Is it Jason? Uh-huh. Am I getting your name right? Oh, sorry. But um, you said something about like I have five G, so that means I'm like good or something. How many yeah, bytes is that? <laughs> that's like I said. A lot of these numbers don't really mean crap. If your video runs smooth, be happy. You yeah. don't need to oh, increase yeah, your that, speed. That's true. Yeah. But my point is, if you're paying for one gig, you better get one gig. Well, you you never will because there's always loss because w- what the provider you're asking from the speed for is just providing you the on ramp yeah. to the expressway. If there's a construction or something like that or any traffic on the expressway, it's going to slow you down. But you really get slowed down on your exit ramp. Your exit ramp is the actual yeah, site actually, you're going we to. We actually don't get slowed. A lot of people get slowed down because the system they have. Uh, is a system in which the more people that are using it at the moment slows the uh, oh, that's the coax speed down. cable. That's yeah, coax. Co- co- yeah. But with uh, with uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, fiber. fiber. Yeah, and fiber does the same thing too because it all goes back to a splitter. You know, at a certain I point, I find that where... fiber pretty much doesn't ramp down at all at any part during the day. Y- you won't notice it. But I mean, it does. Te- you won't notice it because it, it's yeah. so fast. I used one. I, um, I had a, a 300 megabytes. I was paying 150 <laughs> ringgit, which was $30. And Did you hear? I, switched, I switched to 5G, and it seems faster, and I only pay about $10 a month for unlimited data. $10. That's my monthly internet bill. Which version of 5G? Uh, I don't know, but I, I, I've seen it. I mean, I test my speeds a lot, and I get up to seven or eight hundred megabytes per second. So yeah. that's okay for me. That works oh, yeah. for me. That, By the that's way, way I hope more than you ever need. Is really enjoying this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, we well. just lost five <laughs> more listeners. We could be talking medical. Huh? Um, okay. Well, back to the 
Uh, we can do it another time, Alex, if you want. But I, I have written on the history of things. Um, and if, if we can get the pieces of the puzzle together, we can at least document it for histor- history's sake. What, the whole podcast part, do you still have a copy of that file of the audio, Alex? The file of what? The audio, Alex, was the, the thing oh, that the went auto and grabbed. Well, there was a program yeah. this guy wrote called Auto Alex. That's what you really needed. Which then went to my site and saw if I put up a new show, <laughs> and if I did, it automatically downloaded it. And if we can document that, then I you know, so program, much the better. I have but, a program sitting right here. In fact, well, I, I mean, sitting... we have to document. Huh? Yeah, there, there are. We can't just say it. You, you, we have to take certain steps, which I have done historically for other claims uh, to. Listen, I, you don't have to take any steps at all. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. If he has nobody program, else doing, gonna, there was nobody else I doing what I you. was doing. You know, the date is going to be imprinted in the file if he has it still. So. As a matter of fact, date is imprinted in it. I think. Um, I have, and I, I mean, I can definitely look it up. I've got several citations open right now from several different journals, and 1993 is the earliest that I can peg that somebody put audio on the internet. Well, that doesn't make um, it a podcast. Like, well, it, it was a file that was there for people who could go and download it. Yeah, but that. It, it, and it couldn't be a podcast until 2004 because the term had not been invented. Podca- so wait a minute. Terms Pod- on- the term podcast wasn't even in play until when did the fir- uh, first was iPod? 2000- when did the iPod come out? 2004. Uh-huh. It was written in a Guardian newspaper well, article, minute, which again well, is fact let, let me finish with what I'm saying. The term podcast was fo- was created in order to uh, say, hey, this is uh, something you can listen to on your iPod, okay? So until the iPod came into existence, the term podcast didn't exist. Well, the first iPod was 2001, but, okay, and maybe somebody used the term, maybe somebody used the term, but it wasn't written in historically captured. I don't know what you're trying to prove here. I'm trying to make your story historically relevant. I, I don't really, I, I'm not that wedded to it. I'm telling you that I didn't know anybody else that was doing what I was doing. And, okay. and at the time that I was huh. doing it, there were less than about 10,000 websites in the world. Hey, Alex, I think you should re-release that thing because I still actually have to go into my podcast thing and download your shows every time. <laughs> well, I, I, I yeah, physically I mean, have to this, do it. This, this, this particular program wouldn't work anywhere now because it was written for a PC back in uh, 1990, uh, 1999. 1999, yeah. Last, last, last it wouldn't, Windows it wouldn't, 98. Wouldn't, wouldn't be able to use it really on a current... Present Can day. I? I want to. I want to try some Alexa. Tune in to the Great American Broadcast Network. Oh, that might not be a good yeah. idea. It, it hasn't been working, uh, yeah. so I don't know why. I don't know Actually, if they come. I went to the website just Echo? earlier before I called Tune in. Tune into the gr- Echo. Echo. It was, it was Tune into the Great American Broadcast Network. Couldn't find Verizon Broadcast oh, oh, Network. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. It, it, what, what do I say that you have to say? The Gabnet on TuneIn. Well, no, I don't say, no, I don't think so. That's uh, the way I get it. Is that how you get it? Uh, this If is, I use it, but I don't use it very often. other way to do it is... But Alex, when I went to your website before I came on, it started playing music automatically and the show automatically. I thought I usually had to play play but it was playing music over your show. Hmm. Hmm. We let talked me, about that a couple months here. ago. That's uh, Steve Fox's thing. Oh, and that's Steve Fox's starts. thing. Yeah, you got to turn that off. You got to turn it off. I'm trying to look and see. What were we looking up? We were looking up uh, uh, that, that, what I put on the website. Yeah. Um, 
Hold on, here we go. Here we go. Um, I'm trying to see what uh, what we where we put it here. Um, starting. Uh, hmm. Let me see here. Oh yeah, I put here. Oh, oh say. Um, Echo, a tune-in Great American Broadcast Network. Great American Broadcast Network from Bennett's Tune. Here we go. Okay. okay. So you have to say the word. Okay. And then you echo, say, echo, stop. Echo, stop. <laughs> echo, stop. Okay. But it went to Six. Great American Broadcast. Echo, sit. Huh? Roll over. <laughs> Bad echo. Yeah, well, enough of this. This is. Into the great yeah, let's American get on. Broadcast. There's some good news. Yeah. Like what? Like the blonde, what's that blonde? What did, what did she get called? Hmm? Lady Green, Gaga? She get called bleach blonde. Lady Gaga. Which body something, something or other. Marjorie Taylor pink. Green. Pink? Does he mean pink? What is he talking about, Charlie? No, Marjorie Taylor Green. Marjorie oh. Trash. Is it a screaming mess that went on? <laughs> what about Mar uh, Marjorie Taylor Green? You didn't see the screaming mess that went on, and then she she went off on somebody, and then the, she, she uh, stirred it up with AOC, and then AOC got all pissed off, and then stirred up the dais. They all got pissed off at each other. It was a mess yeah. last night. Yeah, she wanted hey, with Marjorie Taylor. She Green stirred them all said, up when they were tired. Yeah, they want to strict. She wanted taken off the record, and they said no. So then she called her a, a bleach blonde bulk body something something. I thought she meant pink. Boy. The gymnast. <laughs> wow. Cat fight, huh? Oh, right. it was nasty. It was good. It went on for about 20 minutes, I think. Was this out in public or in, in the house? It was on the dais. It was a yeah. it was a oh. committee meeting. Oh, you mean yeah. they got out and they said this all to the world from a dais? Yes. In mm -hmm. yes. Congress. Yep. Whoa. How bad it was a committee did it, meeting. How bad did it, it get? It looked like one of our local ones down here in <laughs> in town a school board meeting <laughs> i say yeah. good for aoc <laughs> well, good, of course well it wasn't just her either right there was a bunch of them involved in it yeah aoc hmm. yeah, I, I wasn't I is, they didn't even make the news tonight oh yeah it did yeah yeah yeah, yeah it did yeah the yeah. the the, the, the 6 30 news or whatever no Oh, I don't know. It was on CNN. It was all over CNN this morning. Oh, yeah. It was on AM radio today. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I saw it when I cranked on my radio. I'm just an old man. I can't pay attention to this. The, the other thing is now London Breed's trying to raise $25 million to host a couple pandas at the San Francisco Zoo. What What is this now? London Breed, the mayor of San Francisco, she's she's raising, she's trying to raise twenty five million dollars to host a couple pandas at the San Francisco Zoo. Well, is that the Sounds same like zoo? Is that Flyshacker Zoo? Is that still the zoo? Yep. In San Francisco. Yeah. Oh God! If they get those bears, they'll be dead within ten minutes. <laughs> That's why they need twenty five million for them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you make them into steaks. Yeah, she, she's the same one that ran on the platform. You know, oh homelessness. Oh, we gotta fix this. We gotta fix this. And well, now I she's think in office. The, uh, says, the National Zoo says, has already put in and said they will pay money to get some pandas here, and mm -hmm. they're willing. They took our pandas back. You know, at the National yeah. Zoo. And Ling now, Ling and whatever. Now they're willing to rent some other pandas out. I don't know for. They don't give well, them. Out. They don't give them out. She's you know. done a good job of cleaning up the homeless, Brian. But no, I, no, I, she, no, she, she ran I'm on no. the platform. I know, I know. She That's ran on the platform to to end homelessness, and then when she got in office, now she says, "Oh, it's it's a bigger problem than I imagined." Yeah. So now That's she's trying would. to raise money for pandas. So I guess so that's can find real. twenty five million dollars for pandas, but can't find twenty five million. Hey, you can feed the homeless to the pandas. Both problems the solved. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I I many times felt bad about not living back in San Francisco. I love that it's my hometown, but Bub says, "Don't come back here." He said, "You're going to be so disappointed." You need to go. 
you know, they, they cleaned up really well when they had that, you know, they had one of those conventions here. And the, whoever came here, and, the, and then after that, then I guess well, it wasn't just that led when the Chinese uh, prime minister, or the Chinese yes. chairman. Yes, yes. yeah, they cleaned, they cleaned up the city for him. They cleaned up the city, and and that's how she got the pandas. I mean, they just have pandas. You got your fu money; they can clean it up for you too. All right. Yep. <laughs> Twenty-five Scumbag. million would provide a lot of porta potties. Right. A lot of the people living, you know, the the, the homeless. During COVID, moved out of the really bad neighborhoods and moved into better neighborhoods. In Pacific Heights, you know, these multi million dollar mansions, there's homeless with tents on the streets there. Really? Up on, up, up on. Yeah, and, th- and she's fixed the homeless problem, not. Yep. No yep. one's going to fix the homeless problem. Oh, it's all Biden's fault, don't you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Put Trump in office; he'll he'll take care of it. Yeah, just they'll well. shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, uh, um, 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 Charlie has got a very big problem where he lives. He's got a governor who who's pardoning a guy who killed a uh, 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 what is it? A black rights uh, person who was black lives matter. Black matter, black yeah, lives lives matter guy who was protesting. And he just pulled out a gun and shot him, right? Isn't that what happened, basically? He shot him in the crowd, yeah, and killed one guy. Yeah. yeah. And the guy got found guilty, right, and was given 30 years, I think, in prison. And Abbott pardoned him. And Abbott pardoned him, yeah. 30 years in prison for murder. God save Texas. <laughs> yeah. God bless Texas, yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty terrible, pretty terrible. But, uh, you know, I mean, I used to, I'll tell you, you know, a town I fell in love with at one time was Houston when I lived in Houston. I love that city. It's flooded right now. Yeah. Well, I know it's flooded right now, but next week it won't be as flooded, okay? I'm just saying that uh, that was another city I used to love, and Texas I used to love, and uh, now you've got all this ter- these terrible politics down there. That I don't even know how Charlie can bear to live there. Me too. Me too. I'll I'll never leave the house. He stays inside. (laughs) I wouldn't if I was in Texas either, Charlie. You know, I mean, it's really terrible. But I think I think the country is getting pretty terrible all the way around. I think that we've gotten Mm -hmm. to the point where we're so at odds with each other that uh, we're, this country ha- isn't long for this world unless we do something about it, unless we start learning to get along. I think the only worse place than Texas right now would be Florida to live in. Oh, really? For a major state? Oh. Have you ever worked yeah. in Florida? No, but well, the governor... I have, pal. Yeah, I know you have, and I know how much you love it. Oh, I, I, I just love Florida. That's what I'm saying. You, you loathe it. It's worse than Texas. Probably Florida. I don't know which is worse, to tell you the goddamn truth. I mean, Abbott versus, uh, and we have to add this name to the mix here, Abbott uh, as compared to DeSantis. Who's worse? Yeah. Who, who would you say, Charlie? I don't think anybody's worse than Greg Abbott. Yeah. It's pretty terrible down there. It, yeah. Isn't that what they came out with MAGA for? Mothers, yeah, mothers against, mothers Greg, against Abbott. Greg Abbott. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, I mean, it, it. It. The trouble is, we just we, we're just so at odds with each other, you know. And it is a whole kind of life that has been a whole kind of thing that has been created by a Trump mentality. I mean, he's the guy. I Can you remember us being this divided before Trump? Now, me and my brother were talking about that, Alex. I said the same thing. Like, since he's, since he's come into power and after that, every he's created such division with everything. Yeah. He didn't really create the division. He just made it okay for all the nut jobs to come out. Gave them yeah. a license. Yeah. yeah. And that that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene thing today, or yet yeah, t- t- today, 
that's that's part of that, right? Being able to just yell insults no matter where you are to people, you know, and no respect for for the government or you know. You no, know, you got to be careful in a, in a state like hers that allows guns. But Trump, <clears throat> Trump's someone that's made that okay to do, you know, made her feel comfortable to yell insults to people. Well, people are kind of allowed. I mean, like for instance, I watched this thing with Trump at at uh, at his court appearance the other day and all these republicans are showing up you know why they're showing up because be donald trump piece. is writing down talking points for them mm -hmm. and it's stuff he can't say because he has a gag order on him and he's passing these notes to like people like you know the speaker of the house and uh, who was a couple of other low lives there today or yesterday and they just get up in front of the cameras and they say what he wanted to say all along, you know. And With according dirty to politics. The, well, according to the judge, he said yeah. that he's not allowed to encourage others to speak out of turn, you know, to, to violate the gag order. But he's having mm -hmm. other people do it. I mean, it's just, it's just horrible. I mean, this, this is even going on. This is I the way the, we do. I politics. think the judge can put that on well, him, but he can't. The judge can't stop these other people from saying things. Well, he has stated that he doesn't. He doesn't feel that Donald Trump can encourage other people to do right. it in right. his name, and that's what they're doing. But he hasn't brought the hammer down on him, so you know, and won't. You were going to say something there, uh, uh, Bree. Well, I mean, I think it's just in general, we've, you know, we have a shift in communication norms and it was kind of a perfect storm of, of, you know, the media and uh, Trump's uh, television show, The Apprentice. And, you know, we, we are now a lot more informal with the way we kind of speak where we use greater brevity. Um, we're used to sort of real time interaction. And then when you add in the online aspect where the technology and its algorithms can create the filter bubbles or the echo chambers, and we're, we're not even aware of it most of the time, this is the result, you know? So it is, unless we get some handle on it, uh, I don't think, I think it gets worse before it gets better. And we may have to rely on AI, um, in order to control us. Uh, you know, to provide a, a type of control. I'm not saying well, what overall you're basically control. basically saying is that AI should uh, come along and monitor all this stuff. Uh, AI well, is going to come done. along and magnify, magnify it all. Well, it, it already does. Most moderation uh, is occurred through AI, you know, with AI. And um, AI is, is a reflection of us. We already know that, you know, but... I mean, I was uh, I was going round and round with ChatGPT about um, what the word anti-Semitism means, because technically a Semite is anyone who an Arab an Arab speaker oh, is a uh, Semite. Uh, people who live in Gaza are Semites. Yeah. Right, but ask ChatGPT that it will tell you you're wrong. Uh, it it went round and round with me to say you can't say that basically uh, because historically it has come to represent this. Therefore, your view is is incorrect. And, the, you know, it's funny because we used to be able to tell Stuart Hall had a, um, you know, with the Birmingham school, he used to have this model of the dominant, the negotiated and the oppositional. And we used to know what those were. The traditional mass media would s sort of set those for us. And now we don't have that, not only because the mainstream media are less important than, you know, social media, which we get from other people, but also there are many, many sources from all around the world. So this idea of what you, what is the preferred dominant meaning no longer exists. And that creates, you know, if you're in a room full of people and you got to get a job done, how, what do you do? Yeah, but you, you're usually talking, what you're doing is you're talking semantics here and you're talking about what words mean. And I was taught from a very early age that anybody who lived in that part of the world in the Mideast were basically Semitic, you know, uh, and that uh, anti-Semitism can only happen in a country where it was aimed at one group of people. 
Now, I mean, can you would you say that if somebody is anti-Palestinian, mm. that they're also anti-Semitic? It should be, it should hold true, shouldn't it? Yeah. Well, when I asked ChatGPT, it said, um, technically, uh, it said the term anti-Semitic historically refers to the prejudice and discrimination specifically against Jewish people. Blah blah blah. Some critics have pointed out that this term could theoretically include other Semitic-speaking groups like Arabs, but the established and recognized use of anti-Semitic pertains exclusively to anti-Jewish sentiment. This is ChatGPT's response. See, just after another thing that the Jews took over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, uh, I said. So what you're trying to argue is that the way something has been historically construed prohibits it from having its meaning shifted in the future. Are you sure you want to stick with that position? And then ChatGPT said, language and the meaning of words do evolve over time. And it's certainly possible for terminology to shift. However, in current usage, anti-Semitism retains its specific association with prejudice against Jewish people due to the historical contents, uh, context and significant legacy of discrimination. It goes on, well, that's, and it's well, clear. Well, that's what it's been, we could say that's what it's been misappropriated to mean. You know, I right. mean, well, it is so a misappropriation of the term, Semitic. Yeah. You yeah, know. and I mean, there's a lot of examples where we, we do that with language. But it's funny, you know, when I, I often get into philosophical debates with the, these AI chatbots just to see where their biases are. I can I can spot them from a mile away. If you send me a text, I'll tell you which one you used because they each have certain patterns of content that they're, you know, that their preference is, is towards. But I couldn't believe that. I went round and round and ChatGPT insisted you can't <laughs> argue. No what are you try, what that. You're trying to argue with chat GDP <laughs> yeah, all the time. Wow. I thought I was insane having arguments in my own head. That's like trying to argue with <laughs> Phil, you know. Um, but, uh, no, no, no. Chat yeah, GDP where is Phil? Is intelligent. Hey, where's Jeff? Where's what? Yeah, Jeff. it's black. Yeah. yeah, Jeff is just sitting there. <laughs> Trying to connect his audience. Well, Pam's not there. It looked like he had his son there trying to help him log on. Yeah. How do you know that? Because I saw half of his son's face. You yeah. saw his son's face for a while? And Pam, Pam would have got him on by now. <laughs> yeah. Great. Pam's an expert. Who's, who's connecting the audio? Is there somebody joining that's us? Jeff. That's yeah, Jeff. That's Jeff. Oh. Jeff, camera. That's Jeff. He had the camera on for a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look who's he here. doesn't have one gigabyte. I'll tell you something. This is like a lot of people here tonight. Here, we're going to have 12 people here. Remember the full wow. house and all that? And, and yeah, there's one house. of my favorite people enough. in the whole What is a full world, house? Don Giller. And you know something? I have never met this guy face to face. Neither have I. Lucky him. <laughs> Hello, Don. Maybe he's my, AI. My internet connection looks just fine very slow <laughs> <laughs> is it really that, that's your opening line <laughs> you remember that taxi episode with the oh with this with the stop the yellow light yeah yeah when jim's taking the test you're going crazy that's funny yeah Crystal. what does the yellow light mean Slow down. I'm, oh, sure, I'm sure Don Giller knows who I'm going to refer to. You know Bob and Ray, right? Oh, sure. Bob and Ray used to have a routine that I thought was the funniest routine. I they, These were radio comics, basically. And and they did a bit that I think, there we go. See, Bob and Ray, he's got them. I got them, too. Uh, uh, but anyway... They did this routine called the world's slowest talking man oh, yeah. or the slow talking club of America or something. And the guy <laughs> says, so are you a member of the slow talkers? He says, yes, I am a member of the slow talkers club of America. And 
as they keep going, it just gets funnier and funnier. And then all of a sudden, what he's trying to do is fill in the words he's not saying. Right. And he just keeps going, filling in the words. <laughs> it is one of the funniest routines I ever heard. So when you, you even just doing... describing that as a ripoff, or not ripoff, Disney ripped it off, making a cartoon into a sloths in a DMV. Really? Zootopia. Yeah. Well, yeah. this, this yeah. goes back to the 1950s. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So Disney, it sounds exactly what you're saying. Disney ripped that skid off and made Zootopia. They but ripped off Bob and Ray for Disney <clears throat> stuff. Bob I had Ray. a pod, I had a podcast in the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, well, there, he settled Alex. it for us, uh, Bree. Yeah. What are you What are you holding up? Uh, Zootopia. That's the scene. Oh, they do slow yeah. talking. Yes. Oh, okay. It's a funny scene. But anyway. <laughs> where where, where on Jeff too. is? Ray. Jeff, are you there? <laughs> Jeff, can you hear us? I'm just leaving up there because now it, it, we've got like uh, uh, 12 people here. Uh, is this a full Ray? house? Ray, Ray, are you? Yeah, that's a full house. Wasn't there, wasn't there a graphic? Where's the Ray? graphic? Yeah. Oh, that was back a long time ago. I, I I got rid of those a long time ago. They they're not Probably available not. to me at this. Was well, it because Skype could only handle a certain number oh, or something? Yes. Hold on, I yeah. I do have something. So your here. your your screen. Oh, here we go. Something. Here we go. I, and I oh, he's got, got it. I got he's got it. there. How's that? Huh? Oh, on YouTube. Let me see here. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Yeah, that's jackpot. Um, I wanted to, uh, you, you guys were all talking about uh, the political mood uh, these last few years. And, and I, I hate talking about this stuff because it's just boring. Um, 1968 was worse because people were killed. Mm -hmm. Alex was in that city Chicago? at that time. What or, city, what uh, city are you talking about? Chicago? Well, Weren't you in Chicago at that time? Yeah. 68. Yeah, I was at the, yeah, six, you were I was the, radio. the convention. Yeah, the 68 convention. What do you mean, four dead in Ohio? Is that what you mean? No. Well, that was 1970. Um, oh. No, Robert Kent, Kennedy? That was Kent oh, oh, I thought he meant like an assassination movie. I That's remember, what I did. I remember mean. when Kent State happened because uh, my wife and I were supposed to go on a trip to England, to London. And it was a vacation. It was the first vacation we were going to take in a long time. And uh, that was Ronnie. And uh, was it Ronnie or was it Susan? That was Ronnie. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, we, um, we went to, I said, I, I can't go. This thing's happening at Kent State. I got to be here to talk about it. She says, no, you're going. You're going to have to find yourself another wife, okay? So I'm, so I'm reluctantly, I go over to London, right? We book into a hotel on Grosvenor Square on one part of Grosvenor Square, one corner of it, is the American Embassy. And I wake up one morning and there's a demonstration outside the American Embassy and what they're demonstrating against is what went on at Kent State in the United States. I figured, cool. I went down to the street I got out there, and there I am throwing rocks at the American embassy. It was wonderful. It was just wonderful. I didn't feel I had to leave home to protest. So you know that photographer who took that iconic photo of the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the of the of the student who was killed, and and the woman was the woman, yeah. Yeah. kneeling was, down you know, there. Yeah. That was John Philo. Uh, he was the photographer. He's the uh, the CBS photographer who takes all the all the. Uh, um, uh, uh, Letterman staff photos. Oh, wow. really? it's the same guy. A small it, world. Is right? there a whole bunch of Letterman individual staff photos? Yeah, every year they would take one. Oh, okay. So, uh, because I don't know if I ever saw one for Shecky. He showed me one. He might. He, he's, he he's, in every, he's, page. he's in every staff photo. Oh. Oh, he's in every staff photo, but an yeah, individual a, photo? No. Uh, well, a virtual photo, because yeah. we only see it online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what you mean. 
No, you said that the individual he took the uh, photos of the individuals. Oh no, I I, I misspoke. No, the staff. Uh, the staff staff photos oh, okay. as a group. Group, yeah. group photo. Yeah, because uh, most of them, uh, Shecky was always in the back because reluctantly yeah. he didn't want to be seen. You know, and I always have a great time playing like you know where's Waldo. <laughs> right? Wait, he didn't want to be seen, and didn't he go? Wasn't he naked once on Letterman? Well, yes, oh, yeah, in the shower, good. right? Yeah. Yeah. But you do that because you're getting, you know, in that case, three hundred some odd <laughs> dollars. Oh, okay. If he had more than five words to say, then he would have gotten paid five hundred some odd dollars. Yeah, five and over. Alex. Yes. Was he SAG or you know after yes. something like that? Yes. Of course. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here, here's a good thing. You're going to love this. The other day I get a check from SAG-AFTRA. Ed Asner sued SAG-AFTRA about the whole medical plan shifting and everything like that, and SAG-AFTRA settled. Asner's long dead, but they, Five dollars. Set, they settled it. No, no. I got... $35. $577. Damn. Thank you, Ed Asner, right? the fun part about it. All of a sudden, a couple of days later, Marjorie gets a check from SAG after for $577. Oh, wow. Endorsed it's, by Ed Asner. Well, no, it seems that because she was on my health plan, she, oh, they, oh, she, nice. they were, she was owed the money as well. So we That's walked nice. away with about a th over 1000 bucks. Thank Damn, you, man. Ed, get your NFU money, yeah, then yeah. you get a thousand bucks on top of it. You go to Costco, get some. Yeah. <laughs> money just keeps rolling in <laughs> here, you know? Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. you'll get to go somewhere <laughs> nice and spend it. Huh? Yeah. Or hopefully, you will go somewhere, not get to. Or yeah. share it with everyone who's <laughs> who's come online here. Yeah, right. Yeah, so just spread it. Sorry, talk about that. The we we get Gabnet bucks. Get bucks yeah, we just get yeah. cabinet books. I should and... send you the share of the money I get for the, you know, yeah. the YouTube. I send some money. <laughs> YouTube. I, get, I, I, think, yeah. I, I, made, I think I made $300 last year. Here's your quarter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cabinet yeah, is so kind of like gonna, Bitcoin, isn't it? say something, Brian? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say, we haven't seen Ray for a while. And he, I think, he, are you doing a play right now, Ray? I was. That's why I was gone for so long. Oh, oh yeah. wow. But now he's back on the unemployment line, so. Now I'm back unemployed. Yeah. 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 Uh, but anyway, uh, so Giller, working on any interesting projects at all? Uh, to me, probably not to anyone else on the planet. <laughs> I'm, I'm researching the life and family history of, of my uh, college music professor. Uh, when, I, when I was there from 60, uh, at Antioch from 69 to 73. And it's just gotten deeper and deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how am I going to present this in a way that that's coherent. Um, I, I've, I've uh, screen captured thousands of files uh, from newspaper, old newspapers that are online. And I'm sorting them out now, or not now, but, but uh, you know, when I, when, when I get around. Yeah, so I'm doing that. And, this is and a man who's made a life's living out of not having any life. Which I think is <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention, I was going to mention that it was Chris Elliott that encouraged Shecky to, be, to go naked in the studio. <laughs> was, was it Chris Elliott that encouraged that behavior? Yeah. Did Dave and, know and, that was going to happen? Did that Dave know sense. that was going to happen? No. He, well, Rick said, uh, "Listen, I'm going to do something." Uh, it, it, they were both in the restroom, and and Rick told Dave, "Look, I'm going to do something that you may or may not like," and and he said, "Don't tell me." <laughs> well, I know what Dave. Why Dave did that? I, I used to tell people in in my group, you know, who worked with mm. me, surprise me. Yeah, you know, everybody hates it, surprises, huh? He hates surprises. He hates surprises, but he plays best off of surprises. Yeah. You know, if you don't know what we're talking about, Shecky uh, was xeroxing his dick. Yeah, he was. <laughs> well, it, it, it was. It was. A, yeah, he was in the shower uh, with a with a copying machine. Oh, okay. Yeah, a shower yeah. copy machine was the bit, <laughs> and so they they pull back the curtain, and there is literally he's stark naked, isn't he? 
That's fine. He's stuck yes, naked, he but 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 his but his front is 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 was covered. You can't yeah. see anything. Stuck in the right? copy he's, machine. Yeah. He's standing at an angle. You can't see the front. Well, I right. think what, what they do what they do in movies and TV and so on. They probably had him do is they had him wear a sock. Oh no, he was he. Oh well, yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember Dave. Dave, he threw some pillows into the uh, yeah, into the stall, yeah. and and he kind of took a peek and he said, "Well, we know it's cold water." <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was great. And then Shelly started laughing. Yeah. Alex. Yes. Um, you know, you mentioned Bob and Ray, and Chris Elliott is the son of either Bob or Ray. Of, I get confused of, on which one. But, but that's why he was so snarky because Bob and Ray were like Bob snarky, Elliott and that's was his father. Chris. Yeah, he uh, has the same snarkiness and the same sense of humor as his father, Chris uh, well, Elliott. He's still with that. us. Were Bob and Ray Where snarky? Would you describe Bob and Ray snarky? Well, just like, no. I don't know, not snarky, but they were like bizarre in a way. I know Bob and Ray. I've seen them. You know, I'm old, so I know. <laughs> and, and They were Bob, real funny, though. Yeah. I love them. Bob played uh, Chris's dad in Get a Life. Yeah. yeah the people yeah. Oh, that, I love Get a Life. One of my favorite movies. <laughs> yeah. TV shows. But Bob and Ray were. Uh, I grew up on Bob and Ray. I love them. Just love. My them. mother watched Bob and Ray. Yeah. Yeah, I used to adore their their comedy. I thought it was just the funniest comedy going. Me too. Very funny. You know. Yeah. And it was all done on radio in the beginning. They didn't do TV. Right. And, and, they and later radio, on, they and it was very audio based. And I always that's what I always loved about it. It was terrific. It was just terrific. Mm -hmm. Um. But anyway, so you know, uh, I'm glad that you're you're working on something, Giller. But it's so bizarre. I don't know if uh, you know <laughs> how bizarre. Well, the people who are going to like it are the people who knew the guy. Yeah, you just do. You do. You, you, this is, you haven't really made money off of any of this, have you? No. Nah. You, you never made money off of any of the Letterman stuff because, to your credit, you didn't monetize it. That's why I'm counting on that checky money. <laughs> Suck a hand. <laughs> and maybe you'll get some Bennett money too when he croaks. Yeah, well, you know that could it happen terrible. every day now. You know. Uh, no, nah, I mean it was it was probably it was it was the smartest decision I, I may have ever made when I started putting this stuff up, not monetizing, because I I figured it, it, if I did, it, it was going to bite me. Yeah, but you know, you did that purely out of the love of it. And that's what I admire. You know, you weren't making money off of it. You weren't monetizing it. You know, find different heroes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, didn't you wind up starting to work somewhat for uh for Yeah, Worldwide yeah. Uh, two years ago they hired me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a as uh, I the way I see it, I'm on retainer. Well, the thing is, the thing is is that part of the thing you had was you probably had a certain kind of uh, database um, where you could find certain things that happen at certain times. Yeah, yeah. And that would be I, invaluable I, I to them with the stuff they're posting because they don't know where it all is. Uh, a year ago, maybe, maybe uh, I forget when. Um, I put together a database for them and for NBC uh, at at the end there. Um, uh, and that was the last time you got paid. That's the last time yeah. they, they, blocked, they blocked me after that. Pretty no, cool. but but they're what's nice. I mean, they're using that now. Uh, NBC is using it. Uh, they're 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 digitizing companies using it uh, as the reference. So you know that it feels good to be useful. Well, that's what I, you know. I just like being used. used. <laughs> well, there goes the theme. But uh, just quickly, they. Um, uh, NBC has never really done anything with the Letterman shows after the initial run that they had years ago on what was it? A they um, in the mid '90s they they actually put out some videos. Really? I wonder if they no. put out the anniversary shows except for one, and they put up a uh, uh, two shows per videotape, uh, maybe yeah. ten shows altogether. And 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 I guess the way it sold, they discontinued it. You know, it probably it probably yeah. didn't do much good. Quick note, Alex. But they, but they did. They did do that a little bit. Alex, would you know if Dave owns the material for NBC or is it more? Uh, I don't NBC think he movies. does. Does he? doesn't own it. No. Um, I wonder if he put it on Peacock. Yeah. He's licensing it. 
Or, or like they've to, licensed it they've to licensed him. It to him? Yeah. Okay, so NBC owns hey, it. Hey, listen, we're running out of time. I want to thank Jason for being here tonight. I want to thank me for joining you tonight. And I want to thank <laughs> Alan. And I want to thank uh, Charlie. And I want to thank Brian. And I want to thank uh, uh, Charlene. And I want to thank Bree. And I want to thank, boy, there are a lot of people to thank tonight. I better hurry up. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Kevin for being here. Uh, good having you here, uh, 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 Tony. Uh, Ray, good to see you. Ray. Call more often now that you're not doing it. Yeah, I will. You know? And yep. uh, Don Giller, always a pleasure to have you here. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight, and uh, they're all going away, and I'm hanging up on them. And uh, we'll see you again on Monday. Uh, with the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the pop-up show, and that will be on Facebook at 4 o'clock. And then we'll be back here again, same time, same station in life. But meanwhile, don't forget, uh, uh, next is Amy Manuel, and she'll be taking your calls at GabNet Live. I'll see you on uh, Monday, and then I will see you on Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, uh, tell her that.